Hey, I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates. Go ahead and sketch a tropical milkweed instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a tropical milkweed by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. You can head out to a park, garden, your backyard, or even sketch a milkweed plant clipping or a potted plant in your home. Today I'm sketching from a clipping of a tropical milkweed. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time to observe nature, have fun, relax, and don't get too caught up with the details. Let's get started. So I have my milkweed clipping, and it fits nicely on my page. Don't really have to do a lot. I might want to have the flowers facing this way, but I did want to point out that there is a caterpillar egg on this little bud here. So I'll make sure to save this and let that caterpillar hatch and then put it outside with my native milkweed. And You want to make sure you figure out how you want it on the page. And I can't see a lot of the flowers, so just a lot of the buds. So I'm going to flip this to give myself a better view. And I could also write in later that there was a monarch caterpillar egg on one of these buds. This plant is a clipping and maybe just a little bit wilty since I clipped it. So that's another thing you might want to note or pay attention to while you're creating your image. Most of the flowers look pretty good, but this would stand up a little bit more. So take that into consideration when tracing it. So I'll go ahead and now that I have this arranged on my page, the way I like it, I'm going to be really careful of wherever that caterpillar egg is, of course. It's on the side, so I'm not going to be smashing it. And then I'm going to just go ahead and hold it down gently to keep it in place and just draw some lines for where the leaves are. And if I can, I'll just kind of create an outline of the size, the basic size and placement of the leaf. This is kind of like transferring the image. It is a bit harder, but with time, if you keep trying, you will get it. But it is helpful to be able to trace it. And I like that this is on this side and this is, this is on the back side of the leaf and this is the front side, so I can see both sides of the leaves and observe both of those in this exercise today. and might move around a little bit while you're drawing it and that's fine this is just a sketch it doesn't have to be exact so there's a leaf there and then i need to decide how many of these flowers and buds i actually want to draw so do i want to draw all of these or and, and do i want to include this one here and all of these buds and i might just go ahead and draw all of them it's very similar to the final reference image which had even more flowers but you can see the large buds in the center and the little buds to the right of them and then uh, flowers on both sides so I'll go ahead and start drawing in some of those details so I'm just drawing on the outside and maybe just drawing like the little tips of the buds to give myself an idea of the size and placement. So I'm drawing a little line. And then there's this flower here. And I'll draw the same kind of thing. And then we're basically where this inflorescence ends and then 
goes down here. The same with this one. I make a little mark noting where this begins and where it ends and the basic size. And there's a flower and a bud and a flower and a flower and the, the petals kind of go out this way. And that's about as much as I can trace on to that. So I'll just move my paper to the side. And I'll continue to draw. Oh, I forgot to draw. I think I would like to include these two leaves, so I'm just gonna have to freehand those. And I can do that by drawing in the stem and then starting with a line for the leaf and then just kind of adding in each side. So like a half circle or an oval. And then there's a little line up here, that goes down and then back up as a tip. And I'm not getting super exact. Obviously the sizing is a bit different. And the same on this side. And you can see in the relation to the two kind of what kind of shape this negative space makes. And then you can figure out the placement a little bit easier that way as well. So when drawing this um, and not tracing it, you just want to think of everything as a simple shape. And some simple lines going from one direction to the other and these negative spaces in between can help you determine the placement a little bit more. And now I'm just going to go ahead and go throughout and redefine some of these lines here. And I might use this to protect my image from any smudges from my hand. But start with this leaf. You can start anywhere you like. And the tracing is going to be a little bigger or maybe even a little smaller, a little different from the plant itself. And I might also note that this was a clipping and was a little limp. It can be interesting to note how something behaves once you take it. And I might use my kneaded eraser here to lift up this group of flowers because they are a bit limp. Try to be very gentle since there is a caterpillar there. And that's why it's great to have some of your stuff around just in case you need it to help you out. So that's a little bit more of a natural pose there for that. And my view of this might be a little bit different from yours. And so I'm going to start with stem here and then I like to draw that group of flowers there and the bud and I'm going to work from the center and then out you can do it whatever way you like whatever works easiest for you And I'm just quickly adding in the flower parts. And I'm leaving the lines that I had drawn previously just for speed. It's good to start learning to do it fast and technique 
to increase your speed is to leave those lines and erase less. So just want to go throughout and draw the plant. Start a little small, so now I'm making some darker lines to redefine that, showing that this is a little bit bigger. And I trust those lines are not my previous lines. Instead of erasing, I'm just creating darker lines. And also note on here, some on the outside, if I was sketching this, if it wasn't for demonstration that it's being sketched flat on a table rather than outside on the plant. It's a clipping. And I'm not worrying too much about getting everything exact. I've just gotten the basic idea of this plant on the page. Just a quick representation of it. Just a quick study. All right, so I think that that is a pretty good representation of what this flower looks like. As usual, I'm going to go ahead and write the common name and the scientific name for consistency. Like I said, you may want to write in some observations and onto yours, what I would do if I was out field sketching. a little too close. I don't really like that. So normally I wouldn't erase, but I really don't like the way how close that is. So let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. That's too bad. Still, I made that a little too high. But that's okay. It's going to be perfectly imperfect. And now I'll move on to adding some paint. So I'm going to add paint to this basically the same way I did with the step-by-step -step. and I have revived my paints and added more mixed new paint anywhere that I needed to. Some of the paints mixed up a little bit and so um, I saved whatever I could but I did need to remix some. So first I'm going to start with the green color, the wettest lightest and I'll dab it onto my towel, test it on my paper looks good. Pick up a little bit more, dab it lightly on the towel, and I'm just going to go ahead and add it to all the leaves and all the stems. And if it's a little too dark, I can get a little bit less or make it lighter, but I like the way it is. And when you're done with the green, you can move on to the next color. Next, I'm going to add some of the milkweed yellow, the really wet light, not really concentrated color, so it's going to have more water added to it in my palette. There we go. I'm just going to add that to all of the flowers and the petals the entire flower, including the petals. I'm going to avoid the buds. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of the red color, a little more water. 
color to it. Dab it on my towel and test it out on my paper. Looks pretty good. Oops, moved my little wheel. And I'm gonna add it to the buds. So one thing that'll happen is this painting will change a bit from start to finish because uh, my head will move. So the way I see everything will change just a little bit. So a lot of these lines will be redefined in the final step because I will have seen it just a little bit different even while I'm painting. And then they can interpret it different by the end. Next, I'll add a little bit of the milkweed orange. I'll make sure these are dry first. They looks, the petals look pretty dry. And I'll go ahead and add that to all of these petals here, where the curl is. And when you're sketching this in person, you may notice other things you want to add. And so make sure to do that. Don't have to stick to what was in your step-by-step -step or this exact style. You can do whatever you like. This is your sketch. Make it your own. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of a darker green color. Dab it on my towel after picking some paint that looks pretty good. going to add that just to these leaves and these dark areas. So this is the underside of the leaf. It's really light and so is this one, but this one's a bit darker. So I'm going to add some of that color and I'm sticking with the colors I had from my step-by-step. -step. And I'm sticking with the same technique. Give your color wheel with you, It'll help you make the colors a little bit different if you like. And then next, I'm going to add the milkweed yellow. I just added those to the upper flower parts of the corona with the hood and horn on it. And from my perspective, I really just can see the, the hood here. I'm going to have the milkweed purple. I'm going to add that to the bottom parts of the bud. This is a little bit darker along the edges. Again, staying in line with my step-by-step, -step, which can make it easier for you to recreate this on your own when you're learning. These are really dark in here, so I'll leave those. I'm going to take this dark milkweed orange color and really have fun adding that. In. And I'm making sure to preserve some of the other colors underneath. So you can see there's some lighter areas and darker areas. to bloom are much more red than these, a little bit more of a purple color. These all tend to look a little bit reddish orange. Just the size. You don't need to stay with what you originally drew. I'm going to add some stems for right here, and there's a stem here as well that kind of got left out. And when you're applying the paint, just make sure whatever area you're applying it to, if you're adding a new color, 
Just make sure it's dry first. kind of a medium. Color to some of this too. And those are dry and just something that wasn't really dark orange or really light orange, something kind of in between to add a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna take the red color and add it to the tips of the buds. A little redder on the tips of these newly formed buds there. And this stem has a little bit of a purplish color, so I'll pick up a little bit of that color and add it to the stem. And then lastly, I'll add some of this really dark green color in to really help these leaves pop. So I'm kind of to the darker shaded areas. I'm just doing a quick painting, so just a quick representation of this plant. I'm gonna get a little bit of a medium green color and add it kind of to the back of this in a quick sparing way to mimic the pattern on the back of the leaves. And I think that paint looks good to me, so I'm going to leave it like that, let it dry, and add some ink lines. So first I'm gonna use the 005 Black Micron to redraw the lines and redefine or draw anything in that I added or didn't see the first time around. I may want to protect my image with a piece of paper, so I'll use this image about the plants. And I'll just go throughout and redraw in these lines. Next, I'm going to add some O1 micron lines. You can use this to add some thicker lines for the flowers and the stems. So you can do the same. Just kind of go throughout and thicken some of those lines up. I'm also going to thicken the scientific name. And then lastly, I'm going to use the 08 micron just to go throughout and thicken some of the darker areas and heavier lines. So the stem has a very heavy, distinct line to it, edges to it, so stands out. So I kind of think of what's in kind of a darker area, or what stands out a little bit, or what needs to stand out from everything else. So I like these forward flowers to pop out a little bit more, so I'm going to draw the stems and maybe outline some of the petals to get them to stand out from the others. And that will give a little more depth and dimension. Quick messy sketch. Lines, and if I do this sparingly and not too much, not throw the whole thing like covering every single line with a thicker line, let me give it a little bit more dimension and help it pop, even though it's just a quick messy sketch. So now I'm done. And make sure to take some time to add observations to the side, how you're feeling, how the exercise made you feel painting this, being outside, uh, what it was like that day, what you heard, anything you observed or thought about, 
or whatever you were doing with the flower, what did went wrong, what went right, anything you were thinking about or observing can go on this white space. This is your sketchbook, make it yours. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out naturesketchcrate.com for future lesson crates and to sign up for regular updates. Great job observing your world.